So welcome everybody. Uh, this is a note well to ASDF interim on the 21st of April. 2021. Um, this is the note well. Uh, you are recorded now. Um, so remember, be an ISP professional and uh, the usual IPR guidelines apply. Next slide, please. And if you forgot that they are, they are here and you can read them at your own leisure. Next slide. Yes. Uh, this is a meeting. Uh, we had all kinds of confusion ahead of this meeting, uh, so but uh, this should be reasonably okay. Uh, the plan is to uh, we have uh, we use Cody MD and the link is there. Note that that is a different link from the one that was shown on uh, on the original agenda because uh, we got a new one from the secretariat. Um, uh, what we will do today is present some working group status update. We'll talk about SDF next. Uh, is there anything somebody wants to, add, wants to join to add to this? Sorry. Any additions to this to the agenda? Welcome, Adam. Yes. Nope. Okay. Let's go with this one. So, next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. Next slide again. I just copy the old ones. So status update. We were chartered in October last year. Marco and myself are chairing progress so far. We've survived two IETFs with hackathons. We've had two previous virtual interims. And we managed to produce one implementation draft. Uh, which is under that link, which is the 05 version of, of the uh, SDF specification. And um, so I think we are moving along at a good pace. And uh, <clears throat> uh, looking forward, I think we we uh, we are we talked about this interim at the last ITF, and I guess we will talk about next meeting time at the end of this uh, meeting here today as well. Uh, so, but we haven't planned anything for that yet. And if there are no other uh, input on that, I think we will ask for a, uh, an hour long session at uh, IETF uh, 111. Uh, yes, so we are moving, moving along at a good, good speed. Next slide, please. Um, some more on the outreach, not really much updates. I can provide you some updates on the progress on these things. Um, uh, so is there any news? A... Any news on SC41? Yes. Well, oh, yes or yes or no. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, it, it, the news is that somehow somebody in this process of of managing the contribution managed managed to mess up the contribution. Uh, uh, sort of, uh, I mean, they failed in trans translating it from Word to PDF or something. So we went out in a garbled, some kind of messed up way. And um, the result of that, that it couldn't be voted on in at the uh, March meeting. And now, so it's it's up actually up for Friday, I think sort of, if it was next week or something like that. So this week, uh, so they actually got some extra time to spend on it, and they have been talking a bit with with Usten and the others on, on what to do. He is very positive about this. Um, uh, I've had some. Uh, we had a good discussion yesterday with folks from IEC, uh, from the sixty one eight fifty, and the the folks who build. Um, uh, what is it? The utilities stuff. Not this, not the smart meters, but the actual kind of um, utilities hardware, like transformers and and the power um, distribution things, because they have a very sophisticated and big and complex data model or information model for their system. But of course, they also look and see that they could probably be good to interface um, uh, others in in the surrounding world. Um, so we'll see if we picked up that, uh, or not. Um, but that anyway, was the JTC uh, the, the, one. that was this JTC uh, one, 41. 
the, the no, that is not that group. Okay. Um, in, with so so um, with the SDF is part of a new work item proposal to this uh, SC forty one, and there was some discussions about this new work item proposal with folks from IEC sixty one eight fifty, uh, which is the uh, yeah utilities companies. Uh, uh, specification work about potential, but th that was very much. But the, the the concrete thing coming out of that was that uh, they maybe felt that SDF is a bit um, wet behind the ears when it comes to um, uh, buildings, sort of ma normatively ma mandating in I ISO specifications right away. So, um, uh, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, so, so, a bit long answer, uh, there hasn't been any voting yet, as we understand it. Uh, we'll see what happens. I will let you know, of course. Thank you. Uh, I don't think there's so much, I don't think, it, did we hear back from the electronic data sheet, folks? Michael Koster? He, um... I did hear back from them, but they're they were like we're we're really busy doing a thing for a release. <laughs> so okay, um, it's it's really been quiet from everybody so far. Um, I guess we could do some more outreach again. I'm, I could follow up with them again. I know they they've just been busy sort of getting their own stuff together though, and they're still interested. Mm -hmm. But um, may be a good time to follow up now that we're um, now that we're sort of looking for. Contributions. Yeah. In, Good. In, you know, but, 1DM. Um, so we can get them into 1DM and, and I think that's, uh, but yeah, I think we need to see their use case a little more too. Yep. Good. Um, so that's where we are today. And uh, I think we don't need to really have to say much more here. Uh, so I think we can move to the next slide. Which is. Because we already spent 15 minutes on this. I think we need to get going on the concrete stuff. Um, so this is the, the kind of agenda for today, um, which are the um, the uh, relevant open issues. And um, uh, so I guess uh, Karsten, or do you want to go through this, or or um... sure. Do you even want to take to, to, do you want to run this from your machine? Um, the web no, I think it, it's, the... uh, it's easiest if, if you do that. Um, so I, I just listed the um, issues and PRs that are out there, plus one thing that, that hasn't generated an issue yet, uh, but uh, is being discussed in some detail in, in 1DM. And uh, four of these things actually have links on them, so you can click those and, and we can look at the uh, issue or PR, and I think the other ones are kind of boring, um, so we, we don't need to look at those. So the, the first one um, on, on the list on the slides, if you can go back to that, thank you, is uh, multi-instancing SDF things. Uh, we had uh, some discussions in 1DM that we really need to be able to have an outlet strip with four outlets, and the, the outlets can be described as SDF objects or SDF things, so we essentially need a way to say in an SDF thing that there are multiple multiple instances of sub-things in this uh, thing. <clears throat> and uh, the discussion in 1DM is pretty clear that we want to make this look almost like uh, JSON schema org and uh, the, the PR for that still has to be written. So I think we should discuss this uh, when, when we have the PR. Uh, second item number 12. Carson. We... Yes. Do you want to have comments right away or yes. should we do? So actually one more thing just recently came up on that. Um, do we have a way to indicate there is no upper bound? Yes, you don't, just don't put uh, max items. Hmm. 
It's like I guess right now, if if you don't put min items or max items, then it's it's zero or one, right? No, if if you actually use the items um, quality, then you are invoking this whole mechanism, and then it's from zero to infinite. And wow. uh, then if you add min items and max items, <clears throat> then you are providing a lower bound and an upper bound. Alrighty. So by putting only min item, you say there is no max. Right. Well, works works for me. Yeah, I just didn't realize it, it comes out so easily. Good. Yeah, I think that that uh, people who who define things to be used by by more concrete things will just put the item quality in there. And then using the the mechanism in pull request 30, which comes later on this slide, you can SDF ref that and add your min item and max item values for a concrete thing or for an SDF product. Yeah, and actually for the notes, I guess if, if you don't put a min max, then it's zero or one. No, no. But if you put, so if, if you put, if you don't put any, if you put you items, max, then there's no limit. If you put items ah. in there, there is no limit. I mean, if we want to do it like like JSON schema org, of course. Hmm. Okay, so so let, let, then let, let let's go go through it once more. So if you don't put anything, you don't put items, and you don't put min and max. Then it's well, depending if you have SDF required, it's if, if you have SDF required linked to that, and it's then it's one. If you don't have it, it's zero or one, right? That's the basic case. And if you put items there, then it's uh, undefined amount up to infinite. And if you put min or max items, then you can define explicitly which are the min and max limits. Yeah, we haven't really correct? discussed the interaction between SDF required and min items and max items. Mm -hmm. And we probably need to come up with something yep. for that. Yep. So, sounds good. So yeah, anyway, so I guess that's the discussion for the PR, but maybe just... Good, thanks. So, Michael, yeah, didn't, I mean, didn't you say it's snowing where you are? It was. Because it yeah. sounds like you're sitting on the terrace and we are hearing your wind noise. Uh, yeah, I got a fan. Sorry. I <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you need a fan if it's snowing. Well, uh, it, it's in the dead part of the basement, so that was like <laughs> suffocate. <laughs> Wait, where are you that it's snowing? Uh, I live in Canada. It's always ah. snowing. Uh, no, it's snowing. It's really cold last two days in, in Ottawa. It has otherwise been above 20 for most of the month. Which is I'm in Colorado. Time. It is snowing here also. It's a beautiful day. So have we cleared up this issue that's not yet written? Or do we clear it up to Ari's understanding of the problem? Maybe that's what we did. Yep. Yeah, I, th I think we cleared up the, the max um, bound thing that comes simply by putting their items, but no max items. Um, yep, so I think we have a good design for that. Thanks. So we can move on. Okay, so let's move to, to uh, issue number 12. Um, that's pretty old, and for a while we didn't quite know when we actually wanted to uh, use the, the idea. So right now units in SDF are always, CINML, uh, are always units from the CINML registry. 
and we had a hunch that we would need to be able to uh, put in your eyes there. And uh, can you scroll down? Um, so uh, in in the one DM discussion, there, there finally uh, came up an example. Um, there, there is a rather obscure unit called Slug, which you may want to look up because it's really funny because it also has glugs and blobs and, and other things. Anyway, so th this unit is defined in Microsoft DTDL. And if we want to uh, put in <clears throat> models that are written in DTDL, we probably need to be able to reference this unit slug because it's just defined in DTDL and somebody might want to use it and you don't want to leave holes in, in your converters. Um, but I don't really see that people want to add slugs to the Senimal second registry. Uh, so that would be the use case we were uh, looking for. And um, of course, the, the, the question really is, which of the two dangers is the, the worst one? If we don't have a way to reference URIs, then essentially anyone who wants to do anything in SDF and has a unit that is not yet in there needs to register it in there. And that would uh, increase the kitchen sink factor of, of that uh, registry. But on the other hand, it would really make sure that we don't have fragmentation. So um, if, if people have, well, it, it wouldn't ensure that because people might still be registering the same thing under two different names as we had with Joule and WhatSecond, but th that's a different uh, issue. Um, so th that's the one danger. And the other danger, of course, is if you just open it up to your eyes, then people will be lazy and, and not registering anything and just using an ecosystem uh, specific URI to, to point to things. And uh, that, that's certainly something that we don't want to encourage. Um, the, the problem we have with URIs is it's not clear how to find them. So how, how do I find uh, what, uh, let's say we, we have a Bluetooth uh, model uh, or we want to write down a Bluetooth model and Bluetooth has, uh, th this particular Bluetooth model has some uh, unit that is not in the sendml registry and th that we don't want to register. How do I find the right URI to describe this unit? And we essentially would need to ask every ecosystem to, to give us a rule for uh, specifying this URI. So this is a bit of a complication if we want to reduce fragmentation in this space. Well, what's the downside of needing a registration? The kitchen sink syndrome. Everyone wants to put their right thing in. And yes. So why not have a registration that accepts the URIs? So it's not really in the same sense an IANA process. It's just you, it's a first come first serve, put your URI here and you're done. And at least you then know how to go through and find something that someone's already done. I don't think it's that, worse than. That would be a third registry. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think it's, it sounds to me like it's not worse than the first come first serve uh, tag registry in Seabor. Yeah, but th that namespace is humongous and it's also meaningless. Uh, while the the Senegal namespace is is uh, strings, short strings, and if somebody has registered be uh, WS before you and it's not what second, uh, then you will lose hair. But you are going to open it up to your eyes. I'm saying put your eyes in the registry. Oh, so you, you you don't even give them a, a name. You just allow. Okay, you're gonna you were gonna allow URIs in the the SDL SDF, right? So you yeah. didn't need a registry. I'm saying create the registry and accept URIs, which means they don't have to put them in it, but they are encouraged to do that because that's how they're gonna. That's how they found the, all the rest of their things. 
So maybe something in in between that um if if the you could register a a URI that points to some source of information that has these unit identifiers and you could add you just register the URI that um points to let's say for example Bluetooth organizations could decide their own own URI and put it there and then have a consistent way of on that let's say resulting page to map to their units and that will become the fragment identifier uh you put that on the URI and there you have the full URI for all those. so you wouldn't have to for each and every unit register the URI but just for the namespace Well, practically, <clears throat> when you use these things in an um, SDF spec, you would have to give the thing a prefix anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So that actually fits pretty well with the way you would use would be using them. Do we, do we have a pointer to this uh, DTDL document that has slug defined in it? I can't find it right now. I can send it. I just Googled what, for what, slug, slug and Microsoft DTDL, and I couldn't find, I found the DTDL support for Visual Studio, but not anything about DTDL. Yeah, so should I? I guess I'll, a I'll digital, digital twin uh, data de definition language or something like that, and I guess it is what. Description language, right? But what is a slug? Slug is a unit of mass in the imperial system. So you think no oh notes now. Well not definition, but yeah. Slug use. So we have force versus mass, sort of like kilograms and newtons, but I don't know why they they use why did they include for mass. I mean, you know, why did they include this? The rest of it, the rest of it is SI system metric. That's weird. Well, they do have inch and, and things like that. And there are even metric slugs called glugs. <laughs> So one slug is 2.29815 stones. Oh. You got it. <laughs> okay, we just came up with this example for something that, that is unlikely to make ever make it to the cinema uh, second registry. And it certainly doesn't belong in the first registry because it's just a, a different unit for something that has SI units. Uh, so we thought this would be would be a use case that that uh, would uh, justify working on on uh, issue twelve. So I guess an interesting question is um, sort of like as they face with other, so we're even a language, but like schema.org, do we collect units? Are we are we in the position to sort of create a collection of these because that's kind of what we'd be doing by not all, but by not allowing just external references um, we would end up essentially collecting them all which has good points and bad points I suppose good points being you know it's like a one-stop place the, the the potential downside being that it gets big and and it has to have a but you know we, we're kind of already in the business of doing that so um, I guess just as, as long as we decide that's what we're doing. So, so I, I understand this problem to be, uh, we need an out for for uh, uh, modelers who are have a, a, something which is in a unit that CNML does not already deal with, right? Because CNML has a registry already. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. So. The situation and, and and if it was a common unit that CNML had somehow missed, um, lumens or something was you know I don't know if that's in CNML or not, but I noticed sure it, was, it. I noticed it was in the uh, the digital twin document. Um, so 
Um, what I would imagine that that those units would be would be some kind of uncalibrated unit. Um, so um, some sensor, you know, you need to multiply it by 4.73 and blah, blah, blah. And then you get lumens. Um, but they don't want to do that in the in the unit. They want to return the uncalibrated uh, value because they want, you know, to keep they want to to keep track of systematic, you know, stuff or whatever. And so they want their own unit that is, you know, uncalibrated lumens or slugs or whatever. And I just can't imagine that unit being terribly standardizable. And so actually the URI is just perfect to me. So I'm just trying to exam imagine the case where someone really wants a standardized unit. Um, and Sorry, a, a unit that they're going to share with many other, other uh, models um but that they they can't they can't put it in cnml they can't they can't follow the cnml rules to get a a number a thing assigned one of the nice things about cnml units is that uh, uh you can write code that can handle any unit um, because uh, uh, the secondary units uh, refer to the primary ones in, in a mathematically defined way. Uh, so you can handle any secondary unit as long as you have a recent copy of the registry. And the primary units are supposed to move very slowly. So you should be able to keep up with your implementation uh, to, to the primary uh, units. And uh, of course, that that will not be the case with uh, URIs, and maybe that's something we just need to point out here. I think that's kind of the key thing here to write down the considerations. Like if you go down this path, you know, notice that this is what you lose. Um, that then the engineers in, in charge can do the uh, right, right decisions. Well, yeah, that makes sense. It would, right. it would seem like it would be biased toward updating, as Michael said, uh, you know, you really, really want to point people to update the CNML registry and that's really our. Mm -hmm. That's really what we want to have happen. So just to have like a fallback, maybe, um, but not expect it to be used a lot makes sense. Okay, so to me, it seems that that was a good discussion and, and I'm now enabled to uh, write a pull request. And uh, I, I go with uh, Michael's proposal for the moment that we have our own registry for URIs. Let's see how, how well people like that. <laughs> um, and do, do you mean like the full URIs, like one per each a unit? Or the one with the um, namespace? So here's the... I would probably go for the namespace thing. The, the example you gave uh, with the DTDL v2 uh, kind of discouraged me again because that link actually already has a fragment identifier. So it, that's, uh, yeah. But anyway, I, I propose that uh, we have a way to, to register essentially namespace prefixes and uh, people can use that in our standard query construct to construct their own weird units. Yes, that makes sense. That's what I was thinking early on also is that, that I could imagine using it that way. So there would be a strong recommendation to use anyway units, but if that is for some reason not advisable, do this.
So if you really need six different variants of British thermal units, you know where to find them. And of course, I mean, what we could do is, you know, pre-register a few sensible sources. I'm thinking that there's just a few unit ontologies uh, we could refer to. That it doesn't get completely out of hands. I'm thinking like Yukum and, and similar. And the ontology of units of measure.org. Okay. Well, you probably still need to define how the the URI is to be interpreted because th these don't export uh, a URI based interface. Um, the latter one actually. I mean, given its proper ontology, I, I would expect it to. Yeah, let's check. I that. haven't, I haven't looked into the, in detail. Um, but yeah, let's 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 check that. Good. So that was one of ten issues. Yeah, I think we haven't really made a lot of progress on, on this one, the rules for combining info blocks. I, I think we need to have implementations to learn from uh, first before we can address that. that that's why I didn't boldface this one. There is something called SPDX, which somehow relates to this, has some kind of standard to how mm -hmm. to associate the associate uh, li software licenses with particular pieces of code and so on. I think they're proposing it in ISO. Oh yeah, so so I know a lot about this. This is in the SBOM space. Um, and there's also Cypher, CyberDX, and there's and then also the uh, desktop uh, management group um, has potentially another one coming, um, but I don't think it'll go anywhere. Um, so, do you think there's anything there? I don't. I don't. I only have a very separate, superficial. I don't. Of SPDX, I, I so. haven't read the. I haven't read the 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 issue, um, but um, so as I understand it, you're basically you don't want to. You want to make sure the licenses are compatible when you combine them, and I'm not sure that SPDX is going to, is terribly useful for you directly, but maybe. So the current text already points to SPDX as as the preferred content of a license string. Okay. Okay. But it doesn't still doesn't tell you how to combine them. <laughs> oh, well, let's play around with it perhaps, and then see what we what we end up with. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that the people who are writing code that uh, combines uh, STF models into larger models, that those people actually should uh, come up with with uh, some straw men. Well, thinking mm -hmm. out loud now, um, I guess the, the simplest thing is that, you know, instead of single value, it, those things become an array and you <laughs> put everything in the array. That's a brute force mechanism. Yeah, but you can't combine the. Li the point is that th some of the licenses don't combine. So you can't make a derivative work under a a new license. Mm. Okay, and other works are have various other kind of restrictions on the derivative works. So 
I, 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 I think that, I think that that all the licenses are probably going to have to be special cased, or just going to have a bit that says can be combined or can't be combined. And if it says can't be combined, then human will have to figure out whether a human lawyer will have to figure out whether this is allowed. And probably that'll probably kill models that or definitions that have non combining licenses. Yeah, the problem is that we cannot make that decision. It's really a legal no. decision. So we, we, we can just document it. That's right. We can just document it, right? And and you know, if 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 GE wants to put all their their CenML, all their SDF blocks, you know, in a GPL v three license, um, then that's fine, right? No one can mix and match their stuff. So, so I guess it, it depends on the on the field. So the the license indeed has beyond like legal implications, but maybe the copyright uh, field could, could be handled more simply. You know, either just appending all of them or doing an array or something that kind of mechanical approach. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's possible, um, but I think that that, for instance, if if I gave you something under a BSD two clause license and you wanted to, and you wanted to combine it with an Apache license, the the result of combining those two licenses is an Apache license. Mm, yeah, I, okay. I guess I would do a, a a simple thing that that my combiner barfs if it finds <laughs> that those are not equal the licenses, but yeah. for the other fields it it could do something. Um, something sensible. So that there's the description field, that the version field, and the the copyright field, and the absolutely. Title. Um, and I guess those, since there's no legal implications there, we can we can be more. But maybe some try to sketch up some kind of solution here. Uh, mm. And then have it reviewed by folks who understand these things well. It's probably the best thing to go. Because if you want to have some kind of traceability, what was actually copyrighted by whom? Um, I don't know. Mm. Maybe we shouldn't spend too much time on it here. We, would, we only have 14 minutes left. Um, yep. So, uh, so Karsten, which one do you think is more most important? Well, there are many actions or uh, remaining issues here. Which ones are the most? Sort of There's three bold ones. Um, so, um, let's do them in in reverse order. So, um, number thirty um, actually is a pull request, and uh, this essentially clarifies that the way you combine an SDF ref with overrides is applying the JSON merge patch algorithm, which is documented in an RFC. Um, so we don't have to do lots of invention there. So that, that seems like a slam dunk. Um, th there is one little problem here uh, in that merge patch requires the ability for equality to be null uh, in order to remove it. And right now the, the grammar is, is uh, rather specific in what uh, values are allowed in a particular position. Uh, so maybe that's something that requires a little bit more uh, thinking. And uh, if, if we could initiate that thinking, we could uh, maybe get this uh, uh, pull request to a state where, where we can merge it. We, we really didn't have removal in the use case, but um, it seems like that would be a good thing to look at. Uh, well, if you have a min items it. of, yeah. of uh, max items, for instance, and you, you just want to u reuse that thing, uh, but want to remove uh, the, yeah. the upper bound, 
that's the kind the kind of application I had in mind. Yeah, yeah, I agree that we should we should we should try we should do that. I was I just I guess I should say I wasn't thinking that that we were removing things, but um, it does make sense. So Carson, if I understand correctly, what you're saying, we would need to allow null in any of the qualities of the block that contains STF rec. Yes, and the, the the weird thing is, you would only want to allow it in uh, maps that have an SDF ref in them. Yeah. Uh, but I think that this actually could be written down. Um, so I I haven't quite come up with the right way to to write that, but that might be a way to handle this. And, and by the way, is this for next person or I, I guess this this one? Yeah, this we need for the. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't remember how we call our versions anymore, but the version that will be RFC this year. <laughs> that should have a definition of what SDF ref actually does. So I think that yeah. that's not something we can move to twenty twenty two. Yeah, so if the knowledge, knowledge thing turns out difficult, that null piece we could actually leave for future if it if we leave complications there. That, that's true. Yeah. Good, but I, but I think I mean, overall, I think the mechanism is, 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 the, is a good choice here. I, I sent a, a few editorial needs that I in my humble opinion, might improve the readability. Um, but otherwise, I think it is the right way forward. And I already processed them. Oh, perfect. Thanks. And sent you a read review request. Yeah, that, that's certainly an option to, to put the to do in the document and say we cannot currently do that. And if you want to do that, uh, wait for the next version. Okay. I don't know where we're going yeah. here. So, 29. That's good. And of course, uh, we should Im implement that feature ASAP, yes. the <laughs> merge patch. <laughs> So 29 is, is about uh, uh, addressing all the various uh, uh, things that we seem to have in mind when we talk about the version field. So right now the version field in the playground models is the date, uh, which is needed because we don't have a date field. Um, so we keep the date in the version field. And uh, if, if you click on the, the email, uh, down there on the mail archive link, uh, there, there are essentially four things that we want to uh, keep in the version field, and that's the semantic version, the 1.2.3 thing, uh, maybe something like a token holder. So who's actually incrementing that version? Is that 1DM or is it a contributing organization? Uh, date I talked about. And finally, there's probably a, a reason to have feature tags. So we know which features are addressed by, by a particular uh, instance, a particular variant of, of the model. Um, and uh, yeah, all these, of course, need to be defined in, in some more detail. Uh, but the, the message is out there. So if you have an opinion 
on on this uh, please reply to this message Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I will review this. We'll have another look. Yep. If we need a human readable time zone. No time zone. <laughs> All right, next. <laughs> okay, th that was an issue that, that came up when you combine models. You, you suddenly run into the problem that one model contributes to a different namespace than another model. And how you do you actually represent the combined model? So right now we cannot do this. Models currently contribute only to whatever they define as the default namespace. Uh, and uh, so far the, the best idea we have had is to actually define a form, a variant, uh, of SDF, which is an array at the top level and allows you to simply have multiple models in a single file. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the assumption being that it. you're not going to want to contribute the same definition to multiple namespaces is that you want to be able to contribute this definition into this namespace and a different part of the definition to a different namespace. Yeah, as soon as you SDF ref something from namespace A into a document that has default namespace B, you have essentially copied that definition. So it, it's it's easy to do the contribute to to multiple namespaces uh, thing by but for for a single definition uh, by simply doing an SDF ref. So in an earlier version of the language, we considered uh, maybe it wasn't the same syntax. Maybe it isn't compatible with the syntax, but we considered a syntax where you could put a prefix, namespace prefix in front of a thing you're defining. So you could say SDF thing and you could say, um, you know, ZCL colon, whatever you're defining. And this one's going into that namespace, like specifically override the default namespace by putting the prefix onto the, the thing you're defining. But I don't think the syntax we have is, or there's gonna be problems with that, I think, possibly. Yeah, we're essentially using JSON pointer if we do something like that. Right. Uh, sorry, Karsten, you, you said we're essentially using a JSON pointer. We are losing. Losing. JSON pointer. Okay. So we, we cannot simply refer to JSON pointer and say this is solving our referencing into problem. And because of the column, or yeah, because of the full namespace issue. Because JSON pointer will not find a thing with a column in it. Mm. So we would have to invent some escaping scheme and mapping rules and. Yeah, sure. I mean, we can do that. Yeah. It's it's not impossible. It just means uh, we we get we move from a situation where we simply can point to JSON pointer uh, to a situation where we have some some interesting processing rules that need to be applied. Mm. Maybe it would be worthwhile looking how weird those processing rules get. And because what I'm thinking, let, let, let's say, for example, you defined, because, it, because in the JSON pointer, of course, you can also have a full URI. Well, 
Well, on the side where you referenced, you can do lots of things, but on the side where you where you export, uh, JSON pointer has a very, very simple mind. Uh, I mean, it just uses the JSON file and, and goes through the map members and, and through the array elements, and that's it. It cannot do any processing on that. Yeah, because, because the JSON pointer not right now for us is just the URI, sorry, the, the fragment ID part of it that we're using. Yes. But we're not using the actual URI part for anything. Ah, oh, you're going to do something hacky. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking out loud here. <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, but maybe the, the, the solution is to have a look at how, how hacky it, it would get. Um, Maybe. No, the, 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 Again. Interesting, the, Sorry, the, the interesting thing about the, the hackiness of the result is that the, the way our JSON files are structured, uh, the first part of the fragment identifier is always a keyword, SDF object, SDF type, any, something. And only the second part would then be available for uh, putting in a prefix. So that that gets uh, interesting, <laughs> but yeah, may, maybe you can come up with with an example that makes sense. <laughs> I would first come up with an example, and then we can see if we can make sense out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I guess that can be for V next. It's not. Um, that's not a critical thing for the upcoming RFC. So we have time to play around. Yeah, but we could still address the having multiple models in a single file mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. with the design that it's a it's an it's an array where you put each file content one by one. For instance. Are there other sensible designs? Well, you could make it a map, but then you would have to distinguish the case that you have multiple models in there from the case that you have a single model in there. Yeah, I think we're we'll wrap this up. Um, yeah. Let's 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 Ari. Let's post. Um, don't post the details of your of your hack, but rather what the elements of I think you think you, what pieces of information you think you need to put somewhere to the list. Because then we can avoid arguing about the details of the hack and only the requirements of what you think you need to merge. Mm. Yep, so sounds reasonable. Okay, so are we having another virtual interim prior to 1.11? I think so. I hope so. Okay. We are, sure. And uh, about at the end of May? Or the beginning of June? End of May. There's two weeks of June will be quite chaotic. So um, <laughs> end of May is yeah. preferable. Okay. Yep. We just do, um, yeah. Uh, do a Doodle or, or June second in the same slot we use today. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. Hopefully, can fit it in. Yes. Okay.
can't promise snow on the June 2nd, but I'll try. Sure. Hopefully no snow. Good. But uh, yes, let, let's do another interim on June 2nd. It's uh, let's see how from now. Good at this time slot. Great. Um, any final comments from anyone? Yeah, I was thinking about the. Uh... Good. Do. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, for attending. Um, great. Um, so next time in, on uh, June second, uh, well, we'll see if we use no WebEx or Meet Echo then. But uh, let's see. And thank you all, and have a great uh, well, good uh, good evening, or have a great day, or whatever, depending on the time zone. Take care. Cheers. And I'm stopping the thank recording you. now. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.